by the way, has, speaks a special language. He doesn't speak Farsi. Obama speaks Parsi. That's a language I just invented. Obama is an expert in the language called Parsi. So the second night in L.A., I said, okay, Italian one night. I can't do it two in a row. Wasn't that good anyway. A piece of pizza would have been better. You know, with a, a light beer in, in my house watching television. So I said, let's go to Japanese. So we go to this rip-off Japanese restaurant. I never saw prices like this in my life, ever, in my whole life. It's impossible to believe they get away with it, but they're packed. You can't get in there. So we eat there. The fingers, just to start, at the end of the meal, the fingers felt like each finger was injected with Levitra. Felt like each finger was injected with a male enhancement drug from the salt content. That's the second story, the health issue of uh, salty food. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So that was it. So we come out of the restaurant. I see a guy come in. This guy is the biggest guy I've ever seen in the entire world. I have never seen a man this size. You Name the race. You've seen big men, right? I gasped. I hope that it's on the website or I'll break something. It'll be mis mistake too. Where it is, I don't know. I don't see it. I asked for 30 minutes ago to put it up. What, they couldn't manage to put it up yet? What, five wealthiest Muslim nations refuse Syrian refugees? Great story. Where's the strong man I asked for? Not there. See, this is my problem. I do too many things and I have no management. The biggest man I ever saw in my life with tattoos in it, and each arm was the size of a ham hock, but solid muscle. So, wait a minute, there's more to the story now. Wait till you hear how this one goes. That Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-728. Savage. Right, welcome back to the Savage. So I was talking about a little trip I took to L.A., big deal. But you see, to me, I can find interesting things wherever I go. That, that's a product of my nature. So I, I finished Saturday night. I'm not repeating it. And so now we're up to Sunday night, Japanese Biggest guy in the world I ever saw comes in the restaurant with an entourage like, who is this guy? <clears throat> and I never saw arms like this or muscles or a neck or a head. I've seen big men. But who is that guy? I don't know. So I go out after the meal. I go out in the vestibule. And there he is. I go up to him. So I introduced my, he had a little French guy, a little guy with him, who was probably his bodyguard who could have killed me. So always the big guy is a little guy. The little guy is the murderer, right? That's how it works. I try to tap him on the arms like a hand comes out, like a sh it shot out like a bullet. Like, don't touch him, don't look. You can only look, don't. You know, that kind of, I don't blame him. You know, people go up to touch. Hey, it's like, how you doing? Introduce myself. I didn't think they'd know me, but talk show host. Da -da -da. Oh, great. Da -da -da. Who is this? It gives me, I'm sorry to know the gentleman's name. I'm going to have it up on the site soon. Someone in the group knew who he was or got the name. So he started to talk. Not only is he a strong man, but he was the number one strong man in France. Like, he can pull. I don't know, Hannibal's elephants across the Alps. This guy is beyond belief. How could a guy like that, how would it be like? See, I get down to basics. And I don't mean to be vulgar, but I ask this question to myself because I've always been interested in a variety of human forms. How does this man use an ordinary bathroom that a man uses? This is something I don't understand. I'll leave that aside. But it enters my mind. Does it make me wrong? Robert, does that ever enter your mind? No. How does a man use an app? You go in a restroom. How does he? I can't. I can't do the mathematics of it. It doesn't work. So we're talking. Out of the restaurant, there comes one of the most famous live action movie stars of all time with his wife and children. I'm not going to mention his name. Lovely man. Happens to be a fan of the show. And we chat. And obviously, he didn't come over to see me. He came over to see the strong man. Because this guy is known around the world as a strong man himself but he's older and they start to talk and this is a funny statement so you know everyone's saying hello the people i'm with here's and this one again the daughters the, 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 the pictures of this or that everyone's having a good time she says honey to his wife he says you think i have big hands shake this man's hand he says not my hand by the way robert knew that he says honey you think i have big hands shake this guy's hand i wasn't foolish enough to stick my hand out to shake his wife's hand i knew he wasn't referring to me but I thought that was interesting. So then I talked to the manager, a martial artist guy, and naturally this guy's you know here to make a name for himself. He's got an impediment. He doesn't speak English. That's the problem. In other words, Jean Claude Van Damme spoke good English, so therefore he you know he got got very he's a very talented guy. 
This guy don't know English. He can't make it in the movies. I don't know what you could do with a person like that, that big, like a circus thing, but that's two. What else is on the list? Oh, so we did L.A. Trip, Motormouth Girls. I did Movie Star. I did French Strongman. Now, the last thing I didn't talk about, because I don't think you're interested, is I then the next day, out of total boredom, before the ride home, I went to an antique store on Rodeo Drive, and you'd say, oh, come on. You're smart enough to know what that is. It turned out the prices were lower than most antique stores. And I bought the most, I'm going to make it short because no one buys this stuff. Because I grew up in an antique store, my father's store. I still have an affection for certain types of items. So I bought, and I'm a clock fanatic. I bought a three-piece mantle set, 1900, circa 1900. Bronze ormolu, if you know what that is. Marble. And it's known as a liar clock. No, not the type of clock that Obama looks at for the time every day. This refers to the musical instrument, L-Y-R-E, not the type that he uses in the White House. This guy wouldn't even tell you the time correctly. Anyway, so I got the clock, took it home, and here I am, and it's Tuesday. And now we're ready for the news headlines on this, on this average nation. But I ran through the little trip so far. There's a little bit more, but it's too obscure. It's not of any interest. And there's details within the details of each of those little... So, okay, Obama speaks Parsi. That's new. That'll be stolen before it leaves your breath. The beginning of the show, I gave you two headlines. Judge orders Christian clerk freed from jail. Oh, yeah, really? No kidding. I wonder why, because the judge was afraid they'd lynch him. The mob was ready coming to the church, not to lynch the woman, but to lynch the judge. That cowardly, punk, anti-American SOB. So suddenly so released her finally. That rat. Appointed by George Bush, no less. Why, are you surprised? I'm not surprised. A Bush job. As Pope visit near, as Pope visit nears, U.S. Catholic Church faces financial strain. Or maybe if he sh shut his mouth, the bouncer, and stop talking about global warming, of which he knows nothing about that con man, and paid a little attention to the fact that they're going broke because of the molestation scandal, and straighten out the Catholic Church, uh, and stop flooding the world with refugees, maybe they wouldn't be broke. I love this Pope, this, this liar. I couldn't believe the headline in the LA Times coming home. Asylum seekers spread west-north. Listen to this, the Pope urges every parish in Europe to take in one family as the arriving migrants disperse in Germany. That's a very nice idea, Mr. Pope. And I suggest that you start with your parish called the Vatican. Why don't you take in one Muslim family into the Vatican? Put your money where your mouth is. And by the way, I understand the church is going through a financial crisis under you because you can't pay the pensions of these poor priests who are like a, a pension crisis now. $2.2 billion in unfunded pensions. And it's coming due in the next five years as thousands of priests retire. U.S. Catholic Church has lost millions of its members over the past 14 years following the child abuse scandal. No kidding. Now you put your child in. You, know, you want your son to be an altar boy? Sure. Right. Yes. Yeah, you know, Mr. Mal Malloy will take care of him. Mommy, please. Mr. Malloy hurt me. Shut up. They don't do those things. Tarnish his reputation and force the sold assets to pay billions of dollars in settlements. The church's finances are also under pressure from emptying pews and a demographic shift among Catholics to the U.S. South and suburbs that has left much of its inner city bricks and mortar underused and bleeding money. Pope's coming to Washington, New York, and Philly to shoot his mouth off about stuff he knows nothing about. He's got one reform after another. Everything liberal he's for. I don't know what to have a church for. Isn't the object of a church to tell you you're no good and you're not doing the right thing? What do you need a church for for telling everything you do is okay? Everything is okay to this guy. Nothing's you know, marijuana, whatever you want, abortion, divorce. It's all good. It's all good. So the, well, I don't understand why anyone goes to the church anymore. The number of adults who laid themselves former Catholics, meanwhile, has more than doubled to 25 million since 2000. And church attendance has plateaued. Low donations by parishioners and rising ex expenditures led 24% of U.S. parishes into the red in 2013. Cost cutting has contributed to a decline in the number of U.S. parishes, a steep drop in the number of Catholic schools, as well as fewer hospitals, according to Carroll. Okay. And does that stop this guy from 
globetrotting and spewing lies about warming, of which he knows nothing about? Why would a man with a failing church, low attendance, falling attendance, especially amongst, amongst the educated, and out of money, broke, why would he spend any of his capital on global warming? Do you know why? Can anyone put two and two together? A couple of reasons. One, because the New World Order wants to push the big lie, which I have refuted repeatedly over and over and over again. And I can give you simple facts, even if you're a stupid person with a PhD and you live in, in uh, New York City and think you know everything. Even if you're the smartest moron in New York or L.A., spend five minutes to research the Vostok ice flows, VOS ice core samples, VOST, okay. That's number one. Number two, idiots. The schmuck president was in Alaska last week. I'm standing on the glacier. Look at that. Here's where it was in 54. It was in 62. Look at that. The glacier is retreating. Schmendrick. Whole north, northern hemisphere was covered with snow and ice 300, three, uh, three millennia ago. So he's standing there like, does this man know anything? Did Obama learn from Alinsky that when water melts, it becomes steam? Does he understand that when a glacier retreats, you see trees? Or what does that mean, Mr. Obama? Duh. What does it mean that when a glacier retreats because it's melting and you see trees? What does that tell you? Even a, a liar like you, a basic street liar like you. See, he's Al Sharpton with a smoother g game. I don't think you understand why I have such contempt for him. He has a great voice and a nice suit. Does not make for a great president. He is Al Sharpton with a nice suit and a great voice. See, when the glacier retreats, Mr. Obama, and you see trees, that indicates something. Something you didn't learn from Karl Marx. What that means is that there was a time when there was no glacier there. And flora flourished. And then, eventually, an ice age appeared and covered the trees. So what caused the ice age, Mr. Obama? It couldn't have been Al Gore. It couldn't have been uh, Al Gore's wife freezing the earth with her chilly temperatures. What did it? But the earth changed. I don't know. There was no industrialization. Why did suddenly the warming occur? The ice, little ice age ended. What, happened, what made that happen? Then a little ice age occurred. What, what caused it to occur? Long before industrialization, 1500s, ice appeared, then ice took 200 years slower to go away. Why? Natural cycle. Now, I'm not arguing for pollution. I've worked against it all my life, but please, what I care about the most is honesty and the truth. I hate politicians because they don't even know what the word honesty means. They're born liars. They belong in a freak show that they can lie with such a plum and not even th think that anyone knows what they're saying. So now the Pope's an expert now on, on ice and melting ice caps and weather. As Michael Savage said, the only thing the Pope knows about the weather is that when it rains, his aides take out umbrellas. That's the extent of his knowledge of climate science. Why would this man be talking about climatology and come to the United States? Why would that moron drunk, John Boehner, permit him to speak before the U.S. Congress? How could that drunk permit this? That, that shameful drunk, John Boehner, voted along with the communists to put the Pope in the, in the Congress? I'm offended by it. For three reasons. One, we have a separation of church and state. Secondly, this pope is a communist. And thirdly, there was no reason for him to speak to, to this nation about global warming without any refutation. Bothers me deeply. It's all propaganda. All propaganda. So he's coming here to do that. That bothers me. So the question is, why would the pope invest any time in this global warming issue when he's got a bankrupt church, a, sm a diminishing uh, number of attendees on the pews, Unfunded pensions, what's he trying to do? Well, a good percentage of the income that the church gets comes from the federal government. Refugee resettlement. That's number one. Right now it's in a $2 billion uh, number for housing, feeding, clothing, transporting, and God knows what else they do for them. Catholic charities, racket, business, just like uh, uh, Baptist charities, Jewish charities, you name it. They're all in on the racket. That ended the separation of church and state. Obama bought them all off with federal grants. So that's number one. So you say, well, what does that have to do with global warming, Doc? You still haven't finished your argument yet. Well, here's what it has to do with global warming, Schmendrick. If this Schmendrick, Pope of ours, of yours rather, Pope of yours, is a friend of yours or a friend of mine, not my friend. 
If this pope could get away with this lie along with Obama and the other gangsters and then say that the rising seas are going to cause more.